So your opponent starts in a very interesting way. It's a good move, which is a little unusual, right? Usually, usually they move the pawn two squares when they start off, but this is still a fine move. And you made this great move. Wow, a lot of center pawns moving out. Turn it back into a double king pawn opening with a little bit of a strange second move, if you want to call it that. Developing your knight's great. Four knights, okay, so. One thing that's a little bit different about this position is that when you bring that knight out, you're not going to be threatening this because it's already protected. So maybe, maybe we should get out a different piece. Maybe the bishop to c5, put some pressure on f2, and um, maybe that knight could have some options where it comes out. But this, I can't argue with the move. It's a good move. On g3, maybe they noticed that the, the bishop was a little bit stuck here and, and he wanted to, he or, is it a she or he? He was more interested maybe in getting it on the long diagonal. Okay, and you got your bishop to a great square. Okay, so everybody can answer this question. Is knight g4 a good idea? Is knight g4 a good idea? Well, of course, if if they couldn't handle the problem of, of you capturing this with one of you, either your knight or your bishop, then it would be a good idea. But the problem is, they can't. And there's a really, really good way for them to handle the problem, which is what, everybody? Castling. Castling would be an awesome way to handle the problem. And then, not only do you not really want to take here anymore, you're going to get your knight kicked back, and you're going to waste two temple coming out and back. So it's a failed trip. So it's not really that good of a plan in this position. In some positions it's good, but not in this position, okay? Now, let's see if your opponent figured out how to do that. Well, they just moved the rook, which doesn't make as much sense as also castling, right? Since they have that option to also castle. But um, at least they are defending the F2 pawn. You played pawn d5. Interesting. Pawn takes d5. Queen takes d5. And um, before you make that kind of a trade, you have to be make, make sure you're being careful with this bishop and your king. But I, I don't see anything that scary that they can do to you. But yeah, but I don't see anything that scary that they can do right now. Yeah, not right now. Okay. So um, I guess it's okay. Right. They'd have to do something before they guard the bishop, like something like this. Something like this, right? But that's not that scary. You could just move your queen. All right. So pawn c4, threatening your queen, but also making some strange moves. This this move isn't getting out any new pieces, and it's creating a hole on d4, which means someday one of your pieces is going to dance into that square very happily. Okay. So you brought your queen back to d6, which makes a lot of sense. And then they played the move knight to c3, which also makes a lot of sense. Looking at looking at possibly a fork of sorts here on e4. Bishop f5 controls that square very nicely, and you get to develop a new piece, also getting ready to cast the queen side. I really like the way you're playing, other than this move. I, I wasn't sure about this move, but other than that, I like the... Uh, um, Nick, stay, stay focused here. Okay, so then here's that knight h4 move, trying to maybe irritate this piece so that they can maybe get their knight to e4. Also freeing up this bishop. And you... It says bishop takes d3. Yeah, that's true. When you came here, you made a threat on the d3 pawn, and he he ignored. Yeah, but he ignored this. He ignored this problem, and you went ahead and took this very nice knight. Okay, bishop e4. Um, yeah, they need to take care of this uh, this rook here. This is a problem. So bishop e4 does not take care of that, and then. It says you took the F one. Is that true? No, you must have just you just wrote it down wrong. Okay, well this is this is definitely a better move here, right? You took the right the rook. And the king took, but I even told her that. They might want to um, avoid this queen trade here because if you're ahead in material, then trading queen's gonna be good for you. Maybe they should have taken this knight as the queen. Okay, so the king took the bishop, and then you started trading, which is good. Good idea. Queen takes, knight takes, undeve undeveloping a little bit, and then you won this pawn. Do you guys think that's a safe pawn to capture? I think it is a safe pawn to capture because it's check. But if it weren't check, 
your knight would have a hard time getting back out if they could just control the square G4. He could easily guard that. I should have cashed it. Well, it, it, it's, it's Black's turn. So Black took this. This, that, this is fine. It's check. And the king went to G1. And the knight went back out to G4. And I'm glad you went back out. You don't want to get trapped. Now, also, he's threatening you, obviously. Okay. So knight G4. Bishop to F5. Stopping you from castling that way and threatening your knight. Okay. Knight F6. That's fine. You could also, you could also, you could, no, 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 not this side. I think you could also maybe protect it, possibly. But your move's fine. Knight of six, BG5. And then you start to bring your knight into the center where it's a nice hole. They can't, they can't kick it out with any pawns. You're attacking the bishop, putting some pressure on other really important light squares. And he starts trading some more, which really should scare you too much. You're, you've got extra rooks, right? You got an extra rook on the board, so that's a good. You're up in exchange here. Okay, and then bishop to g4. I guess maybe they're avoiding a trade. Rook g8, gaining that open fi half open file is great. Bishop h3. 92 check. Why? What does that do? All right, do you guys want to see a crazy idea? What would happen if you sacrificed your rook on this pawn? Yeah. If they take you back here, you would move your knight out of the way, save check to them, and win their rook right back. So you would win a pawn out of it. Just make sure your knight doesn't get trapped in here. It won't. It won't. It's going to find its way out, I think. But um, this is something you would calculate. Because it looks crazy, but it does open up a diagonal. Yeah, I was just thinking about something weird like that. Now wait, what if, what? Well, if he takes, he takes. Check. Check. And then you pop off the road. That's the idea. All right, so 92 check. King G2. Rook G5. Um, you want to do what? Oh, block that out. But it's going to be hard with two of his pieces attacking F5, right? You know what? The other thing is, because we're so far along into the end game, you might not want to... You don't really need to castle at all. You could just lift the king up and then bring the rook to D8 without having to bring the king to castle in position. Because after all, your king's not going to be really in that much danger. Well, as I say that, I'm noticing this square is a little bit of a problem. So... Um, I can see why you would want to block those pieces out, I guess. It's just that this isn't effectively doing it because there's two pieces attacking this Alright. Alright. G5, knight C3. Now, let's start trading. Thank you. That's so generous. Trade. Rook D8. Yeah, you kind of took my advice in a weird way. You said, eh, forget castling. I'm just getting my pieces out now. Yeah, you don't even need to move your king. Why are we even worrying about it? Especially after you're lifted this rook. All right, knight f3. Rook h5. Bishop g4. Rook h6. Knight h2. Rook d2. Nice, nice, nice. That's where rooks belong in the endgame, on the seventh row. Good job. Also putting pressure here and here. It's great. Knight f3. Rook takes f2 check. This is beautiful. King g1. And now we've got all kinds of discover attacks, particularly on check on this rook, right? So if you zip all the way over here, you're gonna you could you could no, you could win the knight too. Uh, it's not that bad, actually, because you're going to come down here, check, and pop off the rook anyway. I mean, you almost have, like, three or four good things you can do here. All right, so rook h2 is what you did. Interesting. King f1, rook h1. This is fine. King e2, and rook takes one. And we're going to stop looking at it here because your, um, your position is just overwhelming. You have two rooks and a bishop for two pieces. You have more pawns. You're going to win this. Good work.